The dashing effect of Hollow Knight game is something that I really admire and I always wanted to recreate in God of So here's my attempt of recreating the Hollow Knight dashing effect in God of 4. Now I want to clear one thing that I was not able to recreate it exactly to the point and the major reason is I was not able to find this exact dashing sprite on internet. And the close I could get is this image from Kenny's particle pack. I will leave the link in the description for you to download. So if you are someone who could make images or you are able to find something similar to this design, then your dashing is going to look much more similar to this one. So in this video, I am going to demonstrate how you can set up the dashing effect in God of 4 using this sprite. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So I have set up the basic scene which contain a character body 2D as a root node followed by a collision shape 2D and a sprite 2D which contain our player sprite and our timer node to control how long the dash will last. Now for the dash itself, I have created this sprite 2D which contain this sprite. Now once we get the direction in which we are moving, we will just rotate this sprite in opposite direction. So for example, if the player is moving in the left direction, we will rotate it in something like this. And that's the basic logic of what we are going to do. So let me just go to the script. Here I have set up a basic movement script. First of all, I define a speed variable with a value of 300. Then we have a direction variable of type vector2. Then in the physics puzzle function, I am getting the direction from the input.getVector method which take four arguments, the left arrow key, the right arrow key, the up arrow key and the down arrow key. Remember the order in which they are written are important. It has to be left, right, up and down. So this function will return a vector or more precisely a resultant vector if we are pressing more than one key. So after getting the direction, we will multiply it by speed and store it in the velocity. And at last we will just call the move slide function to move the sprite. And we can just play the game. You will see we are able to move it up, down, left and right and if we are pressing both down and left arrow key, we are also able to move diagonally. Now to implement a dash effect, we first need to create one variable called dashing and initially it is going to be false. This will help us to detect the state when we are dashing or not because we want to perform certain calculations when we are dashing and stop certain calculation when we are not dashing. So first of all, if we are dashing, we don't want to update a direction because when you are dashing, you don't want the player to change his direction in the middle. So for that, I will first check if we are not dashing, then only we are allowed to change our direction. Okay, so now first of all, if we are not dashing and we have pressed the dash button, which I have set in the projects, I have assigned X key for the dash button. So here we are first seeing if we are not dashing and we press the dash button and we also want to make sure that our direction is not zero because there is a chance that when our player is not moving, it is just standing still and if we press the dash button, we don't want to initiate the dash because for the dash, the player has to move in any direction. Without direction, you can't perform dash. So if these three conditions are true, we will set the dashing to true. And for the actual dash, I will just increase the speed variable. All right. So the next thing we want to do is rotate our dash image. So we get the dash, then we get its rotation degree. We want to set its rotation based on the direction we are moving. So first of all, in the direction, we can get its angle. But when you go into this documentation, you will find out that the angle returns the value in radian. So in order to use it, we have to convert it into degree. So we will use radian to degree function and then pass the direction dot angle. And finally, we will subtract 90 degrees from it. I'm subtracting 90 from it because the initial dash position of my sprite is upward. If the image you're using is something like this or something like this, then this value can differ. So you just play around it and figure out what value is working for you. So after setting the dash, I will also turn on the visibility of the dash. Then here comes the final part where we start the timer for 0.2 seconds. 
Now we need to connect the timer timeout function to this script. And inside it, first of all, we are going to stop the timer. Then we will set the dashing to false. We will also turn off the visibility again and set our speed to the initial value, which was 300. And that's it. You can play the game and when you press the X key, you can see this dash effect is working fine. So that's it for this video. I hope you found something helpful. This is just a basic setup. You can definitely improve further. For example, to make it better, you can add particles, you can squeeze and stretch the player's image to make it feel more natural. And if you really want to do something fancy, then you can even zoom out or zoom in a little bit, get a super cool effect. So that's it for this video. And as always, if you have any doubt or suggestion, write down in the comment section and I will try to solve it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.